beautiful night of sleep. Um, back to the cities, isn't that funny? Troy from the Off Grid Project. I don't even know if you can hear me. <laughs> Troy from the Off Grid Project, back in a loud, noisy city. This is where I spent my night. Really loud. Um, I thought it was trucks driving around all night, and here it was a train. Those things are loud. When I first came back to America, um, seven, eight years ago now, I slept right next to the J train. It was about that far away from my window, and that was a little bit closer than that, and it was elevated. It was a raised platform, and we couldn't watch TV or use a phone or any digital wired wireless devices because every three minutes a train went by. And it's funny, here I am, right next to a train again, back in civilization. But this is temporary. This was one night. I'm going to check out the breakfast, get uh, my free breakfast this morning. I'm just heading out for my breakfast. This is San Francisco, California. It's 52 degrees. I don't know why I thought it would be warmer. But uh, the highs are 52 degrees. The lows are in the 40s at night. It wasn't bad last night. I ran around without a jacket um, at the airport. So I think it was in the mid 40s, maybe 50. But and here's my little hotel. Here's where I'll spend the, a few hours today relaxing, doing some computer work until I have to check out at noon. Figure out where the lobby is. Oh, there's a little bit of a mountain in the background. Oh, I see it. It's pretty windy. Well, I got about five hours of sleep last night. It was a very awkward time with uh, with traveling. You don't you don't know what time it is. Uh, well, your body is feeling one thing, and the clock is saying another. Travel is always a, a confusion on the body for sleep wise. Well, I'm going to sign off and go find the lobby. Look at this, I got my own little coffee brewer. That is neat. These are little coffee packs. And uh, <laughs> yeah, this is Troy from the Off Grid Project and the Do It Yourself World on the grid in San Francisco. <laughs> Having a real brewed pot of coffee, which I'm going to greatly enjoy. Um, I'm going to take some time today and see some sights. Uh, it's uh, 10.30 in the morning, according to the microwave, which I will never use. I detest microwaves for personal reasons, but anyway. Um, I'm going to have a cup of coffee. I had a nice breakfast over in the lobby. I had a really nice breakfast, actually. I mean, it was, it was typical hotel food, but um, everything was good but the powdered eggs. But I had some coffee and orange juice and yogurt and... English muffin toasted with butter and uh, a breakfast roll and powdered eggs and uh, something else. But anyway, it was a good breakfast. It was decent. So, I'll be heading out of here soon. I'm just going to have my coffee and I've got my computer sitting here I'm uploading the latest video from yesterday's travels. And when that's done, I'll be heading out into the city. I'm going to take a taxi up to the city. I guess it's not going to cost too much to head out there and see some sights. And I'll take you all with me. Looking forward to seeing a little bit of San Francisco. I guess it's an opportunity that I might as well take. It's a chance to see some sights that I never would have seen. Hope you guys enjoy the day. Well, heading to San Francisco city, the town proper. There's a sign up there. It says South San Francisco. Well, I can't see the uh, the other part. 
sure somebody that lives here will know and tell me what it says. But heading over to the train. I'm gonna take the train into a bus into the city and see some sights today, hopefully. <laughs> I sure do like having my own car though, it makes a difference getting around. It is windy today, really windy. So, off on an adventure. Well, here's the train station. Probably not the pla nicest place to be at night. Some beautiful artwork though. I'm gonna sit here and catch my train. to the city on the train finally. It's late, I've been sitting here for an hour, but off on an adventure. See what there is to see out here. I'm surprised it's um, cold out today. I didn't expect that. San Francisco. Here's the bay. Mountains in the background. It's pretty cloudy. I have no idea what bridge that is. It's palm trees, the first I've ever seen in my life. If that's what those are exactly, I don't know, but I've never seen them before. So here I am. I'm gonna head up to the uh, fisherman's wharf. I guess these are tide markers. It shows how high the tide is. They go up and down sort of interesting. So I'm going to head on up here to my next bus and head up to the uh, Big Fisherman's Wharf. I guess it's a major attraction. On a streetcar heading up to the Fisherman's Wharf now. It's definitely an interesting plant. Pier 39, Fisherman's Wharf. Massive Christmas tree. Well, here we are. San Francisco. Pier 39. Look around and see what there is to see here. Aquarium on the bay. I might check that out if I have time later. It's not too expensive.
is where I'll have my lunch. I gotta figure out which restaurant I want. There's a lot to choose from. <laughs> that sounds interesting. Alcatraz gift shop. We can go to Alcatraz from here. And all the boats. Neat little place here. This place is huge. Just goes on and on and on. So many shops here. Uh, Houdini's magic shop. Wow, this is huge. Hope you don't mind going for a walk with me here and get a look at everything. I you know a lot of people will never get to see this. If my plane hadn't been late, I'd have never seen this. Everything. <laughs> Treasure Ireland. Bubba Gump. Looks like that's the end of this area. Gonna have to check out Bubba Gump. So when it sprays off to the back, it gets on my pants, it gets on me, and it can light me on the fire. Okay, can I see this applause? <laughs> this is what's wrong with America today. Because well, let me explain. I've been juggling a long time. I've been juggling uh, like 30 some odd years. When I started, if I got lit on fire, I would have done it. I know. It would have been some dude, high nine, dude. That must be the famous Alcatraz. Wow, it's it has to be it. It does look rugged. Been talking and now he's tossing uh, flaming sticks. Now, now in other parts of the world they juggle different. In Europe they take it serious. Ha! In New York it's frantic. Here in California it's like, oh wow. Now to finish, people, I'm going to share with you guys the thing I did about a year and a half ago. Well, find a place I'm going to have my lunch. It's a pre-may. 
Alcatraz in the middle. There's a rugged looking island behind it as well. There's a lot to see here. I never would have known actually. Now I do. Now I'm going to see what it costs to eat in here. It's not too bad, it might be cool. Yes. $20 for a person. Maybe I'll keep looking for a few minutes. <laughs> Well, I didn't plan on spending a lot of money, but Lefty's has left-handed mugs, which, by the way, pour your coffee out on you if you use it right-handed. It says, warning use of this mug in a right-handed manner may be hazardous to your clothes. I'm going to take one of these home with me. It's pretty cool. Finally, a world that respects left-handed people. Most of these cups I like to have the hole in them like that. I figured I'd show you this. I had half already. It's amazing. It's a fish wrap with like some salsa and some um, coleslaw, toasted um, bread, and fried fish inside. Really, really good. Well, for ten dollars, I'm taking a boat ride. Emerald Lady, water taxi. I'm gonna go see the bay. Happened to be walking by when he announced ten dollar price. I said that's not bad. Some nice boats out here. That's 
Antonio the first day Goes out to be a full-grown sea lion bull, but weigh about 850 pounds. Wow. You're sure about that? Yeah, they get real big. Now these guys are a horrible pest. These guys are sort of The only cute. people that really like them are the hippies and the tourists, which is basically all of San Francisco. So these are federally protected animals. It's funny no they call them pests. Predator. They're so cute. <laughs> now, I also want to tell you guys about Forbes Island. Good little slapped up right there. They're piled Forbes up. Forbes Island is yeah. a very <laughs> There's interesting piece of San Francisco history. Why did they get mad? Man -made. Man -made. You get to live on top of the island. You live inside the island. So you see this the is a floating holes, island. Oh, Those are in the ceiling. Oh, really? So you see the Forbes actually lived underwater inside his floating island. Ustedes ven las ventanas aquí en las piedras. Señor que vivía aquí, vivía debajo del agua dentro de su hizo flotante. Ahí hay un motor atrás que puede manejar la isla entera que se mueve en barco. Romantic restaurants in San Francisco. We eat dinner underwater, it's roses on every table, it's all candle lit. In fact, if you're not in love with the person you're having dinner with beforehand, you will be by the end of it, so you have to be very careful what you take with you. The only problem is it is a little expensive, about thirty to forty dollars a plate. So it's a little high for my budget, but this is what I'm saving all my tips for as a dinner at Forbes Island. I'm also looking for a date to take with me. If you know anybody, please send them on over to Gate C. Richard, 
Do you know what raw sewage is? It's poop. We had 350 inmates, all the prison guards and their families, pooping directly into San Francisco Bay for almost 30 years. Wow. What's your name, young lady? telling us that um, for a 35 foot boat it would only cost you six hundred dollars a month to live out here full time explains why there's such nice huge beautiful boats over here six hundred dollars a month he said in the city it's uh, thirteen hundred for a tiny little studio apartment in a very bad part of the uh, city here you could live in a very pretty area for 600, clean and safe. There's some nice looking boats. Very nice looking boats here. Some big boats. I'm trying to go over and see where the sea lions were so I can go see them. They were cute.
Hi, this is Divina here yeah. at the Pearl Factory. And uh, she was just telling me about these real oysters. Yeah, you can oyster look at pearls. the model right there. Yeah. Okay. And you were telling me how did, how are these formed again? Well, these oysters are actually grown in pearl farms in Japan. Uh -huh. That's the picture. Oh, it's there. in Japan, actually. That's right, yeah. Okay. What they do in the farms, you know, they take uh, oysters that are mature now, about uh -huh. two years old. They put them first in warm water and then cold water. So oh. the oysters voluntarily relax. So they open dying. up, okay. Yeah, and then quickly they make an incision inside the body of the oyster and insert a little piece of uh, clam shell, you know, they make into round beads like this. Okay. It comes from the Mississippi River, it's called the pig toe clam shell. And when they insert it inside the body of the oyster, they also get a small piece of this mantle gland from another oyster. The mantle gland is what secretes the shiny surface called mother pearl or nacre. Okay. It's the same as the inside of the shell. Now, after the operation, they put the oysters in big tanks, you know, they wait for them to survive the operation because they're very delicate. And after a week, they put them in baskets like that. They're hanging wraps about 60 feet in the water. Uh -huh. and the oyster is really irritated. It's got this tiny irritant inside its belly. Right. So what it does to protect itself, the mantle gland actually heals around the seed and starts secreting layers upon layers of mother pearl around it. Uh -huh. It's the same shiny surface as the inside of the shell. Okay. Right there. And it keeps on growing a little bit at a time. It secretes about 30 to 60 layers every day. But it takes at least another year and a half to two years uh -huh. for one oyster to make a good size pearl just like this. Okay. So we know there's going to be a pearl inside. You know, the only thing that we can't tell you, of course, is the color of the pearl. Right. It could be anywhere from white, cream, blue, silver, gold. You know, they're all different natural colors of the pearls. Okay. And although I can guarantee you at least this size, you know, right. there's no way to tell uh, what exactly is going to come out. Okay. You know, but this is the smallest size you can possibly get. You can get okay. larger than this one. So. Occasionally, it's possible to get two pearls in one. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah. So so let's, uh, I'd like to... So what we do is you can pick out an oyster, you find a small chubby one like uh -huh. that, you know, Yeah. and I'm going to get the dish for you. So I get to choose an oyster, let's you see. You need to choose an oyster. Well, it's going to be your pearl. So it's well, here's some rice red color on this yeah. body. Let's see what that will reveal. That see, look, like this is, uh, he's different from all the rest. So I'm going to buy myself a pearl. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> so you can you can watch and uh, join us with a celebration of the birth of the pearl. Okay. Our company is actually from Hawaii. Uh huh. So hold on to the tongues with me. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna tap the oyster three times. Okay. okay? Yeah. If you hold it. Yeah. It's recording. All right. Okay. So if you just hold it right there. Okay. And on the count of three, we are going to say aloha. Read my shirt. Welcome to your pearl. Okay. Oh yeah. There you go. Okay. So you're gonna help us with that. Aloha, okay. 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 Ready? Okay, let's do it. One, two, three. Aloha. And we ring the bell from San Francisco for good luck. Okay, let's see what you get. Thank you. All right. So. Look at the mother pearl inside the shell. This is yeah, a beautiful that's color. Yeah, any yeah. of these natural colors can be the color of your pearl, uh -huh. which is actually right here. You are ready for your pearl? Oh, there oh, it is. My Let me refocus. Oh, oh that's uh, normally if they're this big, you know. They're so, pretty. so we give it a little bath. Aloha. Look at this. That's wow. Pretty. Okay, that's hold really out your pretty. hand for me. Okay, there's your pearl. Really <laughs> Very nice. See, nice. a birth of a pearl. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. It's so round too. It's very nice. It's very round because the irritation is uh, round to start it, it out. out round, yeah. right. So it takes the shape of the irritant. Now, wow. put it right here uh -huh. for me. And the pearl is actually like a little baby. It's got a belly button. Do you see the little dark spot right there? Yeah. That's the birthmark of the belly button oh. of the pearl. Yeah. <laughs> That's where it starts. So what I'll do next for you is a free service. Uh -huh. I'm going to go ahead and drill it halfway. You know, right where the belly button is or close to it anyway. Uh -huh. Because uh, whatever you want to do with the pearl, it's round. It uh -huh. doesn't have any corners. So uh -huh. it, um, when you drill it halfway, it can all go on a little post. Oh. Yeah. And this is the best time to drill it. because. 
because it's still soft. It's still soft? Yeah. Okay. And that's also, um, you know, the reason that we sell them only as oysters for fourteen ninety nine is because the pearls are still inside the shell. Uh -huh. So technically, you're not buying the pearl. You're not paying for the value of the pearl. You're buying an oyster. An oyster? Yeah. Okay. So look at this one. This is Is there any chance I can more. keep the shell of the oyster that you want opened? To, yeah, sure. But it's going to be stinky. Yeah, I realize yeah, okay. that. We can wash it. <laughs> <laughs> we can. All right. I'll go ahead and drill it for you, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. Nice pearl you picked out. Yeah, that right? turned out well. Well, thank okay. you very much for the demonstration. You're that was, very uh, welcome. My was pleasure. Very nice. Yeah, so let me show you what you can do with your pearls. Something okay. kind of fun, okay? All right. Something different. Um, ooh, if, have you been to Hawaii yet? No. Oh, maybe soon. Okay, uh, hey, look. Oh, nice. You can make That's a little pretty. gecko pendant out of That's it, pretty. so you can hang it on a small chain. Yeah. You can put it on your keychain. You right. You can put it, like, um, you know, in your RV. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, you, so you can um, display your pearl. Right. You know, use it and enjoy it instead of just having a little pearl in the back. So right. So you can do it like that. The gecko in Hawaii is a symbol for good luck also. Oh, wow. Yeah, they find them in uh, ceilings, uh -huh. you know, and they're all... In the house. In the house. <laughs> yeah. And in the Philippines, if you have one gecko in the room, yeah. you know, it's lucky, considered lucky. Oh, wow. But if you have two geckos in the room, that's double luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty. Yeah. Now, is this... Um, this one is sterling silver. It is, okay. Yeah, if you want, you know, I can set it for you. It takes about a minute to put it together. Um, well, let me let me consider that for a minute. Yeah, but, uh, sure. Well, thank you very much. Oh, and sure. I'm going to sign off here. Okay. Seagulls are normally ugly, but I have to say these are quite pretty. I like the gray ones. Want to smile for the camera? Huh? That's a big one. goes on and on and on. Um, just keep walking down the shoreline and there's so much to see. It's the historic Pier 45. If I had more time, there's some museums in here. Sorry for my bouncy walk. My um, laptop is bouncing against my back all day long making me a bounce. There is a submarine in the ship I saw earlier. I want to go get a better look at it. World War II fleet submarine, World War II Liberty ship. And the, uh, both of these have been used in movies, actually. The uh, tour guide was telling me, but I didn't catch it on video, unfortunately. My memory's not good enough to uh, remember what movies he mentioned. The bay is pretty right now. I don't know if you can see the sun glinting off the windows in the buildings over there. It's nice. Well, I can't even get to that. It's closed. The Jeremiah O'Brien. Um, tour guide on the boat was saying they built these in 90 days. They were mass producing ships in 90 days during the war. Pretty impressive. Here's the sub. They're still open, but it's twelve dollars to get in, so scratch that. I find it amazing that these guns were underwater and all this was fully submerged all the time. I find it quite impressive that this stuff could go underwater. Some serious guns on this. Gracefully floating boat. This is an antique arcade museum. Oh, some elaborate stuff. Not like what you see these days. What's this? Santa's workshop. This is an arcade. Insert money. Watch it work. 
kinds of stuff. It's just humongous in here. <laughs> Old Wurlitzer. Stuff. Wow, that's not so old over there. Some serious old machines in here. Look at how elaborate that is. Toothpick fantasy. Wow. You can tell it's ancient. Look at that. That's made out of wood and leather. That is neat. The old days. Sends a message, no shots. Oh, weird. I don't think I put my hand on that. <laughs> Execution. <laughs> yes, you love. Well, I guess I'll fail at that one. Oh well. Can't win them all. This music box. This place is huge. I could spend days in this city. This is nice. It's a steam bike. Motorcycle, how cool is that? Hmm. Sort of went backwards, but that's what I just came out of. Antique coin operated arcade. Well, as the sun sets on San Francisco, all the bright colored lights are showing, it's time for me to head back get to the airport and fly on to Australia. But it was cool to get to see some sights. I've never been to the West Coast. And uh, it was a good opportunity. It was neat. I can't explain it, but I feel a peace in San Francisco. I don't know if any of you can understand what I mean, but different cities have a different pace and a different spirit so to say and I wouldn't have expected it I would not have expected at all to feel peace but I do it was a good day it's a pretty place if anybody gets a chance, I would uh, I would advise it. It's a massive Christmas tree. Well, I thank God for the opportunity to come here, for delaying my flight, for giving me a day here in this amazing city.